We are making the All 12 Planet Zoo DLC tier list. Y'all love the every animal in Planet Zoo tier list, and so it's only right we continue this series into ranking all 12 current Planet Zoo DLC packs. As always, we strive to meet a strict criteria when doing these rankings, so y'all know what I am looking at when ranking the packs or animals. So pause if you must, but here is our criteria for today's video. Starting off today's video, we have the first Planet Zoo DLC pack, the Arctic pack. In terms of animals, I honestly thought this pack had a solid selection. We got our heavily requested polar bear and reindeer. Obviously, you know, one looks much better than the other, but then we got two animals that seemed to be a little bit more controversial, the doll sheep and the arctic wolf. No matter your opinions on the animal selection, the majority of the animals in this pack are quality, so what it comes down to is really your rankings, and that will probably be determined in how much you like the selected animals for the pack, because I think we can all agree that the scenery items in this pack, though there are many, are extremely lackluster. Unless you're trying to build a specific tundra-themed park with Christmas elements, the builder and you probably saw this pack as a waste of $10. For me personally, Personally, I don't mind having Christmas themed scenery sets. I usually make a Christmas themed something every year during the season, so I find it nice and convenient during that time to have those pieces, but comparing it to every other pack we have left to go over, the scenery definitely leaves something to be desired. But for me as a player who would rather see all animal packs over scenery packs going forward, the animals in this pack do enough for me to put it into the top of the C tier. Coming in next in the Planet Zoo life cycle, we have the South America pack. Right off the bat, I don't think this is a controversial thing to say that South America was a huge step up from the Arctic pack. But one thing I've noticed now over the years is just how much these first DLCs have started to show their age. But we will still give it a fair and equal ranking. If anything, this goes to show just how much better Frontier and the devs working on Planet Zoo have gotten in their craft. South America introduced us with four unique habitat animals, the jaguar, giant anteater, Colombian white-faced capuchin monkey, and the llama. But also on top of that brought in our first DLC exhibit animal, the red-eyed tree frog. I know the opinions on exhibit animals don't rank very highly, but come on, I think it's fair to say I think everyone has to admit the red-eyed is a very, very well-deserved choice. As for our other animals, well, maybe this is a controversial take, but I think these animals aged better than the majority of the animals we got in 2020. The worst, in my opinion, being the giant anteater. Yes, it is or was considered good at the time. Behavior-wise, it's still a great animal, but from a model standpoint, its flaws have become more and more known over the years. The jaguar is an animal, however, I do have a controversial take on. I said it in the animal tier list and I'll say it again here. It's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. It's got good textures, a decent model, and great behaviors. It's a little small, which is a crazy thing to say considering a lot of the animals from year one and launch, you know, the base game, are just way too chunky. But even though the jaguars have subtle flaws, I do think it's still a very good animal and a super necessary inclusion. The capuchin and llama, on the other hand, well, it really comes down to, do you like those animals in real life? Everything about them is accurate and well made, but if you do have a negative personal preference on them, well, that's basically half the animals in the pack. For me, I, I love them, honestly. The llama has definitely grown on me over time as well. Do I wish we would have gotten something else like a sloth? Yes, but it doesn't make me look at the llama any less because of a certain animal's absence, which a lot of people in this community seem to do, but hey, you know, to each their own. Remember, we are talking about my list and my rankings here. Uh, Scenery-wise, on the other hand, I basically adore this pack. I think there are a lot of pieces that can be universally used here by all players, and the mossy rocks, out of all the horrendous, I know, maybe controversial opinion, out of all the horrendous base game model rocks, are still my favorite
to this day. The building pieces in this pack are decent as well. If you really like building in a tropical setting or you like building South American themed sections, well, it's probably safe to say you'll have a field day with this pack. And if you don't, well, this pack will probably rank quite low for you. To me, this pack has enough to keep me going no matter what kind of zoo I'm building, and it includes enough iconic South American animals to keep me content for the time being. So this pack for me goes easily into the high B tier. Now, oh boy, the Australia pack. Um, well, where do I begin? Animals, we got the red kangaroo, koala, southern cassowary, dingo, and eastern blue tongue lizard, or blue tongue skink for people in the herp community and, you know, Overall, not a bad selection. The dingo perhaps being our weakest pick, but it makes up for it for being one of the best canines in the game. Red kangaroo and southern cassowary are also very strong picks, and it also helps that they're both some of the best animals in the game. On the animal side, where this pack really disappoints is in the foul treatment of the koala. I think we can all agree the koala is one animal in major need of a rework. This animal has had many fixes over the years, but like the clouded leopard of the Southeast Asia animal pack, it is still broken to this day. But unlike the clouded leopard, the koala doesn't look accurate at all. Looks more like a teddy bear or a koala build a bear more than anything. I wouldn't be surprised if someone at Frontier stitched in a little heart with it and everything. To me, it really doesn't make sense to cutify the koala considering most people already view the real life counterpart to be cute. Uh, this paired with the fact that the koala's climbing and behaviors are totally and completely broken, the pack here loses some major points with me. If there was an animal frontier had to make sure not to screw up, it was definitely the koala. And oh yeah, the blue tongue lizard just exists. Honestly, I don't really have much to say about it. Scenery wise, this pack for me just totally misses the mark. Sure, we got some fun little Australian themed pieces in here. I mean, it is the Australia pack, but outside of that, there really isn't much that's useful to me anymore. Basically, every piece in this pack that was deemed useful has been overtaken by a more modern piece that is flexi color and even more useful and realistic. I know what y'all are going to say, Old Country, you're contradicting the point you made earlier about how new, similar animals shouldn't make older animals obsolete. That's because all the animals in the game are unique species. Even if some look similar, they still aren't the same animal, whereas the pieces in this game, well, when we get a wooden wall, for example, that isn't flexicolor, then in the next pack we get a very similar wall that is, well, to me it's a little different than getting a Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman and then getting a Spectacled Cayman. They're two totally different animals. Just because one is better doesn't make the other one worse to me. But when we talk about the scenery that is extremely similar, I think the point is actually quite valid. And let me tell you, the Australia pack is full of these sort of pieces. The only real use I still get out of the Australia pack still is the six or so grass pieces. I totally forgot what they're called, please forgive me. Uh, those in most situations still look nice and hold up to this day. Everything else, not so much. But since this pack has three animals that are very, very good to near perfect, the Australia pack is going to go right above the Arctic pack for me in the C tier. Next, we have the Aquatic pack. Now we finally get into, well, what we thought was a bit of a turning point for Planet Zoo, was just a bit of a teaser for what was to come in the future, if you ask me. The Aquatic pack gave us a little teaser of what could be the new standard for DLC packs. Overall, what I'm trying to say is the pack is good, and I think most will agree on that point. But does it hold up? Well, animal-wise, we got some iconic and well-deserved picks here with the King Penguin, Giant Otter, Grey Seal, Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman, and Diamondback Terrapin. All these animals still to this day are extremely solid, and thanks to 2 meter deep diving introduced in 1.7, it got even better. A big part of how you view this pack will really come down to, do you like the selection of animals they chose to represent the aquatic pack with? I know a handful of people who don't like this pack solely because the animals aren't truly aquatic. To me, they could have named the pack whatever the hell they want, it still would have ended up being a total banger. Scenery wise, the pack also kills it. Faux rocks, even though they are starting to become a little more outdated the further we progress, and we definitely are in desperate need of new rocks, still hold up as being decently usable depending, I guess, on the situation. The faux trees, however, on the other hand, ended up being the real faux rocks of the pack. Still to this day, they are extremely versatile in design and end up looking more like faux rocks than the actual faux rocks. Something I hope Frontier is aware of. 
of. When people are using faux trees and stalactites as rock walls, I think that paints a very obvious picture on what kind of scenery needs to be added next, but that's not the topic of today's video. The foliage of the pack? Amazing. The other pieces of scenery, like I mentioned earlier, are basically better pieces from the first three packs, but actually made to be flexi color. And on top of that, we received some of the better animal signs to date, a trend we will see continue in 2022. Aquatic overall, very solid pack. For me, it's easily top of the A tier. Some great animals, great pieces, but some bits and pieces are starting to show their age, which makes it just sit outside of the S tier for me. So like I said, still easily top of A tier. All right, so we've gotten to this point. Southeast Asia Animal Pack. Oh boy, okay. On Instagram, I might have mentioned that some of my opinions on previous packs have changed. This is definitely one of them. Will it be bad or good? Well, let's take a deeper dive. This was our first animal pack, and also I have a little theory with this pack that I've only mentioned once before, but my conspiracy with this pack is that it wasn't originally supposed to be an animal pack until very late into its development. It would explain some of the rush designs of the Malayan Taper, Bintrong, and Dole. Also, the fact that this they didn't have all the animal signs finished for launch. Something just never smelled right with this pack for me. After Aquatic came out, there was a big moment where people were starting to suggest we get animal only packs. People wanted more animals and less scenery. Well, it looks like Frontier took that to heart, but with Southeast Asia, maybe a little too late into the game. Anyways, conspiracy aside, we were introduced to the Sun Bear, Clouded Leopard, Babarusa, Proboscis Monkey, Binturong, Malayan Taper, Dole, and Giant Leaf Insect. However, four of these animals were not like the others. From launch, the Sun Bear, Babarusa, Proboscis, and Clouded Leopard were all top tier animals. The Bintarong was fixed after the whole fiasco, but the Dole wasn't changed until much later, and even then, the changes were very minimal and didn't fix the more needed requirements for a good Dole model. The Malayan Tapir is, well, we all know the situation with that animal. Easily the worst and most lazy animal in the game, which does end up actually really hurting the pack in my opinion. But honestly, I think a lot of people when trying to rank this pack really only focus on the two bad animals instead of the six good. Sun Bear, Clouded Leopard, and Babarusa being three of our best animals in the game. So the real question is, do you like the trade-off of scenery for these added animals? To me, it's mostly worth it. The Binturong is very good and the Dole is kind of meh. But the four other animals I mentioned as being good earlier really make this pack worth it to me. There also wasn't much more they could do with the Asian scenery anyways in the game. I think it would have been redundant at this point. So Southeast Asia, though it has some major flaws, it also has animals that really make this pack stand out. Southeast Asia gets a bit of a surprising spot in the top of the B tier. All right, we are on the Africa pack. At one point in time, I would have proclaimed this pack to be the best pack in Planet Zoo. Well, my opinions may have slightly changed. Still a very solid pack, but I'm a little more open to some of the criticisms at this point in time. The animals, amazing. We have the meerkat, the southern white rhinoceros, fennec fox, African penguin, and the sacred scarab beetle. All S tier if you ask me. By no stretch of the imagination can anyone say these animals are objectively bad. They just aren't. You may not like their inclusion, but that's neither here nor there. The main issue with this pack lies within the scenery pieces. Foliage is amazing. I do wish we would have gotten copy rocks with this pack. It was our first scenery pack without new rocks, and this trend will continue up until this very day, but I'm not going to hold that against it. The scenery pieces may as well rename this pack to be the plaster pack because that's about what you're getting in terms of universal reusability. The North African theme is definitely an acquired taste, that's for sure. Personally, I do love the scenery, but there are a handful of outlier pieces in this pack that I haven't used and probably will never use. Is it the best pack in Planet Zoo? In my opinion, no, not really. Is it heavily carried by having a perfect roster of animals? Yes, yes it is. The Africa pack comes down to your preference on that North African style. There are a handful of pieces I still use today, like the plaster pieces, but there are also a bunch I don't use and probably will never use. I definitely think this pack is a step up from packs like Arctic, South America, and Australia in terms of scenery, but it did fall a little short from where we were two packs ago with Aquatic. Strong animals, strong foliage, mid scenery, the Africa pack just stretches itself into the very bottom of S. If y'all want to say A tier, I would totally understand that as well. Remember, I'm a biased source of animals over scenery. A perfect animal roster for me is bound to go into the S tier. 
the North America Animal Pack, the birthplace of my channel. Probably still to this date my favorite time to be a Planet Zoo fan. We had just gotten Africa a few short months ago, and then we get my most requested pack with some of my most requested animals in North America. It was a total dream come true. Animals included the beaver, moose, cougar, American alligator, prairie dog, arctic fox, California sea lion, and American bullfrog. I mean, say no more. Frontier. Y'all already have my money. This pack is going to come down to these two perspectives though. Are North American animals common in zoos near you or are they a rarity? To me, these animals are what I consider to be essential. This, for any United States players, would be an essential pack with the mindset of trying to build realistic zoos. With a perfect roster for representing North America and a near clean sweep of perfect animal models, textures, and behaviors, there really isn't too much I can say about the pack. From the in-game perspective, it doesn't do anything wrong, really. Sure, a few tweaks can be made to help the male California sea lion out, but that's really about it. After that, it just turns into a perfect pack. Like I said, this is going to come down to how essential are the animals to you. And for me, they're some of the most essential animals in the game. They're also some of my favorites. Almost all of them made the S tier for numerous reasons in my All Animals Ranked video. North America Animal Pack is an easy S tier and sits right above the Africa Pack for me. All right, all right. The moment I can imagine some people or a lot of people have been waiting for. My hot take on the Europe Pack. To me, someone's take on Europe is going to be very similar in principle to my idea on how someone would look at the North America pack. Are these animals considered zoo animals where you live? Speaking of animals, we have the Eurasian lynx, alpine ibex, fallow deer, European badger, and fire salamander. Overall, to me, it's a pretty weak roster. It's an extreme rarity you would find any of these animals over in America. Fallow deer, maybe. More common in private collections though. The fire salamander really is the only one you're gonna be likely to see here, especially in zoos with much larger herp collections. America has similar animals to these like the bobcat and Canadian lynx, Nubian ibex and American badger. But even then, not the most desirable animals in my opinion. But the quality of the animals is good, right? Not really. The Europe pack almost all around animal wise was a complete miss. I tried to like this pack for so long, I really did. The backlash I got was pretty big when this pack came out. I initially said I did not like this pack. Later, I went back on it and called it underrated. I knew many people, well I still know to this date that many people do like this pack, but the more I really look into it, the more I just cannot admit to liking it because I truly just don't. Not every pack is going to click and be for everyone. Remember, this is just my list. I'm not expecting anyone's list to be the same. But jumping onto a more positive note, let's address the scenery of the pack. This is where we see a little bit of sunshine. Though the pack has some heavily themed items, also in a sense of expanding upon some of those Christmas items we saw in the Arctic pack, the Europe pack also gave us a decent handful of very universally used pieces. Also, some pretty cool enrichment items as well. I'm looking at you, Scarecrow. Uh, foliage was an absolute win. We got some really cool and really needed temperate plants in there. But once again, missing out on some really cool and unique rocks. But like I said earlier, I won't hold that against the pack. One thing I do want to mention though is when I went through the contents of the pack again recently, I couldn't help but believe the Europe pack is almost being a little too over exaggerated probably from nostalgia there were some really nice pieces added into this pack but not nearly the amount i think people remember if you're a fan of super classic european architecture chances are you're going to love this pack as an american i struggle to see the use in a lot of these pieces maybe i'm being a little too subjective on this but when i compared the pieces i thought had use to me with two scenery packs yet to come up i found out that europe may be a little bit overrated the animals to me are useless, and they do suffer from a good deal of issues. The foliage and enrichment items are an absolute win, but scenery to me overall is just kind of mid. Europe pack is going to be placed into the low B for these reasons. Some very good things in this pack, but also mixed with some not so good things. Planet Zoo kicking off 2022 with the Wetlands Animal Pack, what some at one point had considered to possibly be Planet Zoo's most controversial pack has now seemed to turn into a fan favorite. Animals include the Capybara, Platypus, Asian Small Cloud Otter, Nile Lechwe, Wild Water Buffalo, Red Crowned Crane, Spectacled Cayman, and the Danube Crested Newt. 
Overall, a very interesting roster to say the least. Nile Lechwe, Wild Water Buffalo, and Spectacled Cayman all on the same Planet Zoo pack, you say? Talk to me a few years ago and I would have thought you're out of your mind. The roster is definitely an acquired taste to say the least. So why is this a fan favorite? Even though it has some rarer and more controversial animal picks, the animals in this pack are some of the best and most quality animals we have ever received. Like North America, there is nothing really wrong with them. It's going to mostly come down to how you view the roster. I've seen this pack get thrown around the S tier all the way to some people's F tier or bottom tier, whatever it may be. I'm always open to new animals that aren't extremely well known. I believe there is a way to do it and also a way not to do it. Some people might be thinking though, well this is pretty hypocritical considering how you just shafted the Europe pack animals. The difference between these two packs is first off, Wetlands still has some very common and desirable animals like the Capybara, Asian Small Clawed Otter, Red Crown Crane, and Platypus. And I get it, Platypus isn't common, but it is super desired by many including myself. And second off, the Wetlands animals are objectively better and more accurate than the Europe pack animals. When I look at animal packs, the quality of the animal is really the main factor that determines how and where I rank it among the other scenery packs. Wetlands doesn't do anything wrong, except if you don't like the roster. To me, yes, the roster could have been better, but it doesn't cancel out the fact that the animals are all amazing. Wetlands for me is an easy S tier pack, but we are going to put it slightly towards the bottom right above the Africa pack. Conservation is a pack. There, I said it. Still to this day, I have no idea what my true feelings are in conservation. If there is a pack that is probably guaranteed to bounce around my list in the future, it's conservation. Our animals include the Chevalsky's horse, scimitar horned oryx, siamang, or siamang. I know a lot of people like to say siamang and they, they go, you're not saying it right. I say siamang. You can say it both ways. Both ways are correct. Uh, a more leopard and axolotl. But to me, the roster is just fine. All the animals are quite quality except for the Amur Leopard, but even then it's kind of grown on me a bit. The Axolotl, as some know, isn't my most favorite animal in the world, that would be an understatement, but still it is a quality animal and a decent pick, more so a well-deserved inclusion. I don't really have any feelings either way towards the horse. I'm not a big horse person, but I think they nailed the model and it's a very deserving pick for a conservation pack. The Scimitar Horned Oryx is a very good animal as well, and the Siamang is one of my personal favorites. Yes, it's a little clunky with its climbing animations, but at this point, what animal isn't? Still, it's a solid roster of animals with just slight hiccups here and there. The pack really shines though for me at least with its scenery and foliage. Going back recently to look at the pieces revealed to me that this pack, scenery wise, may be the best. Only problem is, there's not much of it. As much as I like the foliage as well, most of the choices are on what first glance seem to be recolored flowers. Going a little deeper obviously shows that they are indeed different, but to a more casual player, I think it would have been better to just give us a set of flexicolor flowers and use the other spaces for more unique foliage. Like I said, my take on this pack is very confusing. I like the scenery, but I also have issues with it. I like the animals, but most of them aren't really my favorites. Overall, I think there is definitely enough here to say the pack is good, perhaps great even. With some highly requested animals, backstage scenery, and diverse sets of foliage, this pack on paper sounds like it's amazing, but when I get into it, it just leaves something to be desired. So for me, Conservation is a low A tier pack, perhaps high B tier, I'm not really sure, so I'm kinda gonna just leave it at high A or low A. It's almost a spooky season. At long last, we have the Halloween equivalent to the Arctic pack. Hey, hey, calm down, Twilight pack lovers. Y'all don't even know what I'm going to say yet. It's the Halloween version of the Arctic pack in the sense that it gave us a heavily themed pack surrounding Halloween with a roster of mostly North American crepuscular animals. The holiday theme is about where the comparisons end. The Twilight pack is better than Arctic in almost every single way. Our roster of animals included the Raccoon, Red Fox, Common Wombat, Striped Skunk, and Egyptian Fruit Bat. Overall, this pack might have some of the most consistent animals out of all the packs. None of these are super common, yet none of them are super rare either. All of the models are on point, only a few slight gripes here and there, but overall, the animals of this pack are actually pretty good. Scenery might be even better. 
With some amazing foliage choices and overall great scenery pieces, many of them being flexicolor, the only thing that some people may not like about this pack, especially if you aren't American, is the decent amount of Halloween scenery. Personally, I love it, but to others, not so much. It's easily the weakest part of the pack, I will give you that. This is the kind of pack that on paper shouldn't really work, but when you get into the game and see what it has to offer, well, it's safe to say it exceeds expectations. Also, it included our first ever flying animal with the Egyptian fruit bat. Sure, some of the animations are clunky, but the model is gorgeous, and it paves the way for much more as we will see in the next pack. Overall, I don't have too much else to say about the Twilight pack. Do you like Halloween? Well, you're probably gonna like this pack. Were you in need of some small filler animals? Well, you're probably really going to like this pack. Overall, the pack is quality, though it leaves out some notable inclusions like the Tasmanian Devil and African Crested Porcupine, it still delivers on all the fronts. Twilight for me is an easy A tier and sits right above conservation. Last but not least, our final DLC of the video and the most recent DLC to be released from Frontier, the Grasslands Animal Pack. Right off the bat, just I, I just have to applaud Frontier on this one. Easily our most quality animals to date. I still am going into the game and watching them to this day and just being totally in awe of how good they look, how accurate they are, and just how they move and behave. This is all probably spoiling where it goes on the list, but y'all already know I think very, very highly of this pack. Also them fixing the striped hyena, just the cherry on top. Grasslands introduced us to not eight, but 12 new animals being the maned wolf, nine banded armadillo, striped hyena, emu, red-necked wallaby, caracal, blue wildebeest, monarch, blue morpho, European peacock, cloudless sulfur, and old world swallowtail. And for those who have no clue about the last five animals I just talked about, they are all different kinds of butterflies. Like I said earlier, every single animal in this pack just screams quality. One issue I know some people had with this pack was that not all of the animals are best represented by the Grasslands title. To me, I don't really care what they name the packs, as long as we get a good lineup of animals that are found in zoos and they are all quality is really what matters to me. So with Grasslands, I don't think it's really a surprise to say it's my favorite pack. The Striped Hyena, Maned Wolf, Emu, Rednecked Wallaby, and Nine Banded Armadillo were all in my most wanted animals prior to the pack releasing, many of these easily within my top 10. Overall, this pack is a win, and yes, it is my favorite pack. So this is going into the top spot of the S tier. So there you have it. it. That is my tier list for all the Planet Zoo DLC packs released so far. We do have it confirmed that we will be getting a another year of DLC, so when this year finishes, I'll probably just make a little update video to this unless my opinions change in some sort of major way, which I doubt. I've kind of come to terms with how I view each pack, so for all 12 of these, this is basically where I expect them to stay forever now. Maybe conservation moves up or down, like I said, I haven't really figured out how I really view that pack, but everything else is probably going to stay where it is. And just remember, this isn't the correct tier list, it's just my tier list, it's not the only tier list it's just my opinion it's some facts mixed in with my opinions and bias to create what i say is my tier list so with that i want to thank you all for watching my tier list videos always do really well and i'm super grateful for that so it's been old country have a great day y'all